Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. Friends, in this video we are going to discuss about lichens. Now when we talk about lichens, so what is actual meaning of the word lichen? We can say lichen is nothing but it is a symbiotic relationship between algae and fungi. First we need to understand what is symbiotic relationship. Symbiotic relationship means it's a relationship where two organisms are together and both of them they are getting benefited from each other. So lichen is produced by the marriage of algae and fungi. How the algae is helping fungi? Algae performs photosynthesis, gives food to the fungus and in return the fungus absorbs water and gives it to the algae for photosynthesis. When you talk about lichens you need to understand these are natural indicators of pollution free area. It means if you find lichens growing in any part of the world, you can assure that that area is pollution free. Lichens are found from Arctic to Antarctic. You go any part on this globe, if you find lichens, first it is pollution free area, plus lichens can grow in all those areas where even trees or the plants cannot grow. So lichens grow in any condition, but only one condition they should be there, it should be pollution free area. Lichens was first studied by Theophrastus 300 BC, the scientist who gave the term lichens. Let's understand the algae and the fungal components of lichens. When I say algae, so algal component is called as phycobionts, where the word phyco means algae or it is also called as photobionts. Photo means the one which performs photosynthesis. The most common type of algal partner is chlorophyce, that is green algae or cyanobacteria that is blue green algae. When you talk about fungus, the fungal component of the lichen which is also called as mycobionts where myco means fungus. The most common type of fungus seen in association with the lichen is ascomycetes. Rarely we find basidiomycetes and deuteromycetes. If you want to know ascomycetes, basidio and deuteromycetes, you can see the third part of the living world where I have discussed fungus in detail. So these are the two components of lichens, the algae and the fungus. Whenever we talk about the pigments, the lichens color, we can see different pigments of the lichens. It can be greenish, it can be bluish, it can be yellow, orange, even brown and black color lichens have been seen on this earth. So lichens are symbiotic relation between algae and fungus. A study of algae is phycology, study of fungus is mycology. When we talk about the fungal components, so Alexopolis and Mims were the two scientists in 1979 who described the fungal components in a different way based on the fungal partner. First is Ascolichen, second is Basidiolichen and third is Deuterolichen. When I say Ascolichen, it simply means the fungal partner is Ascomycetes. When I say Basidiolichen, the fungal partner is Basidiomycetes. When I say deuterolichen, the fungal partner is deuteromycetes, where we can say that the deuterolichens are the sterile lichens, because in deuteromycetes we never know the reproduction method of the fungus. So sterile lichens, which produces no spores. On the basis of the external form of thallus, for those students who don't know what is thallus, thallus is nothing but undifferentiated mass of the cells, you can say where the plant body is not at all differentiated into root, stem and leaf. Like for example, you take a look at the algae. Can you make out what is the root, stem and the leaves? So the answer is no. So that is called as the thallus. Based on thallus, we have different types of lichens. First, crustose lichens. The word crustose means rock. So they grow on the rock, basically rocky appearance. Second is folios lichens. The word folio means leaf. So they are leafy lichens. And third we have Fruticose lichens, which has fruiting body in it. When you talk about crustose lichen, they are thin and flat lichens. They mostly grow on the bark or rock. The examples of crustose lichens are Graphis, Lichanora, Hematoma. The folios lichens, these are lobed. Dorsi ventrally, they are flattened, means from dorsal and the ventral side, they are almost flat. They are leafy lichens. They have rhizoid like rhizine. It means they don't have roots. Even they don't have rhizoids, but they have something called as rhizines, which work like rhizoids. The example of folios lichen is Parmelia colema peltigera. When we talk about 
the fruticose lichen it is shrubby lichens cylindrical branched pendulous straight and the fruiting body kind of stuff it's like a pendulous which is hanging which is nothing but the fruiting body of the fruticose lichen they are attached to the substratum by mesial mucilaginous disc so they have a mucilaginous disc which is helping them in attachment an example for fruticose lichen is cladonia usnia electoria these are the three examples of fruticose lichens so these are the three types of lichens based on the thallus crustose folios and fruticose lichens they have great advantages so let's understand the economic importance of lichens because we all are moving towards the medicines but these naturally occurring lichens they also help in treatment of lots of disorders and diseases let's understand lichens they are used as a food lichens have lichenins in them lichenin is similar to carbohydrates it means in the cold areas where there are no vegetation possible there the lichens grow and the people eat lichens as the source of food so lichenin is the one which provides energy similar to carbohydrate example for lichens as food is lichenora esculenta in israel it is used as a source of food umbilicaria esculenta in japan it is used as a source of food we have parmelia which is used in curry powder curry we all know it's a type of gravy or the one that is used to make the vegetables so curry powder even chocolates and the pastries they are prepared by the help of parmelia second important is lichen as a fodder in cold countries there are no grasses available so the reindeers or the animals in that area which are herbivores they love to have lichen as a source of fodder to be very much specific it is for the reindeers and the cattle example is cladonia citraria evernia parmelia any lichen you can provide as a fodder then we have medicinal use lichens such as usnia and cladonia they are used as antibiotic against gram positive bacteria lobaria and citraria they are acting on the respiratory disorders like tb if you are having tuberculosis and you eat lobaria and citraria it gets treated easily peltigera it is a type of lichen which is used in case of hydrophobia it is a fear of water parmelia is used to treat epilepsy usnia is used to treat all the urinary disorders so if there is any disorder related to urinary tract or urinary bladder it can be treated just by having usnia as a medicine some lichens are also found to be anti carcinogenic means it is going to prevent you from cancer it means lichens if we eat occasionally also it is going to help us to be free from cancer industrial uses of lichens countries like sweden and russia they have lichens as a well, you can say they are used countries like sweden and russia they use lichens in the preparation of alcohol even it is used in tanning and dyeing industry litmus paper rosella and lasalia are the two lichens which are used to prepare litmus paper rosella is used to prepare acid litmus paper and lasalia is used to prepare base litmus paper orsin is a biological stain when you say biological stain it means the stain that we used to study the ts of plants or ts of root or ts of animal tissues or even bacteria you can use orsin for as a biological stain and the example is ochrolochia androgyna and ochrolochia tortaria these are the two lichens which are used in the preparation or it is used as a biological stain some lichens are even used in the preparation of perfume in the perfume industry like we have evernia and ramalina so these are used in the perfume industry lichens they have very important ecological role lichens are the pioneers of rock vegetation it means in deserts where there is no possibility for growth of any of the plant the lichens first starts growing so we can say these are the first plant to settle on the barren rock lichens when they grow on the rock they secrete certain acid like carbonic acid and oxalic acid these acids normally what they do they corrode the rock and they result in the weathering of the rock and because of this what happens the rock breaks into small small pieces and it leads to soil formation 
and this process of formation of soil by the help of lichens is called as pedogenesis so this is what is lichen all about in detail now let you are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe give a like if the video has helped you out till then this is sunil sir saying goodbye to you thank you very much stay blessed